Hey guys, this is Mrs. Arbin, and this is section 2.5 for Algebra 1. Today we're going to be working on solving multi-step equations. Our biblical integration is this. God allows us to have challenges in life, but he also equips us to face them. Becoming familiar with useful terms is like putting on an armor to face algebraic problems. And everything in life, we've got to start with a solid foundation. We don't want you guys to become frustrated because you don't have that solid foundation in math or in life. Uh, and we want to make sure we can tackle problems by putting on those fundamental pieces. Your lesson objective today is this. You, the student, will solve two-step equations. In our last lesson, we solved one-step equations to solve for a variable. Now we're going to add some extra steps. The operations done to a variable must be undone using inverse operations in reverse order. So imagine that you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? You get out the plate, you get out a knife, you put the bread on the plate, you get out the jar of peanut butter, open the jar, spread the peanut butter, get out the jar of jelly, open the jar, spread the jelly, and put the two pieces of bread together to make a sandwich. Well, to undo that, we would have to go in the exact same order but in reverse. So first we would have to take the sandwich apart, Take the jelly off, put the jelly back into the fridge, take the peanut butter off, put the lid back on, put the peanut butter away, put the bread back into the bag, put the knife away, and then put the plate away. So solving for a variable is kind of like that. In an equation, there are things that have been done to this variable. Uh, it's been multiplied, it's been divided, it's been added to, it's been subtracted from. We have to figure out what's been done and then undo it using inverse operations. As a reminder, Inverse operations undo each other. So the inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of multiplication is division. And the inverse of raising something to an exponent, raising a base to an exponent, is taking that same base and taking the root. We won't be dealing with these two so much right now. Right now we're looking at the four basic operations. So you guys learned PEMDAS uh, or GEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, addition and subtraction from left to right. Well, when we're solving for that variable, we're going to go in reverse order to get that variable by itself. So let's look at solving 2x plus 6 equals 21. When we take a look at the variable, we see that what's being done to it is that it's being multiplied by 2 and it has 6 added to it. The first thing that we want to do in reverse order is get rid of that 6. We want to get the 2x by itself. Well, to get rid of a positive 6, we've got to use a negative 6. So 6 minus 6, this will cancel out. But because this is an equation, we need to keep it balanced. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So on the other side, we also have to subtract 6 to keep it balanced. That leaves us with 2x equals 15. Now, what's being done to that x? It's being multiplied by 2. So the inverse of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. So I'm going to divide each side by 2 here. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. I can write the 1x, or we can understand that it's implied, because I can see I have 1x. Uh, so 2 divided by 2 is 1, but whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Now 15 divided by 2, that's not a nice, neat number. So we can leave it as uh, an improper fraction, 15 over 2. To check our answer, we would take this and plug it back into the original equation, which was 2x plus 6 equals 21. Check your work and see if you get that. 2 times 15 over 2 plus 6 equals 21. 2 times 15 over 2 is just 15 plus 6 equals 21. And we get 21 equals 21. That is a true statement, which means our answer is correct. Okay, let's solve a divided by 1.5 minus 3.6 equals negative 4.4. First, we need to identify the variable, and we need to undo everything that's been done to it, starting first with addition and subtraction. Okay, I see that I have a negative 3.6 here. I can get rid of that by adding 
3.6 using an inverse operation. Well, negative 3.6 plus 3.6, the opposites, those cancel out to zero. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Since equals means it has to stay the same, I have to do the same thing on both sides. And when I add 3.6, I end up with a divided by 1.5 equals negative 0.8. Well, I need to get that a by itself. I need to undo this divided by. And the inverse operation of divided by is multiplied by. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.5. 1.5 and this 1.5 will cancel each other out. They'll become 1, so I have 1a. And 1.5 times negative 0.8 gives me negative 1.2. To check my answer, I can plug that back into the original equation, substitute it in, plug and chug. And I should find that negative 4.4 equals negative 4.4. Now, let's look at this equation. Uh, AX plus B equals C. When we're solving equations in this form, A, B, and C are numbers. X is our variable. So step one, we're going to undo the addition or subtraction of the constant term. The number that's all by itself, we're going to undo it. So if it's a positive number, we'll subtract it. If it's a negative number, we'll add it. Then we'll undo the multiplication or division done to the variable. And whatever coefficient is here, if it's being multiplied, we'll divide by it. And if it's being divided by, we'll multiply it. We'll use inverse operations to get the variable alone. Let's solve x divided by 3 minus 7 equals 2. Pause the video and see if you can do that one on your own. Push play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, first we need to get the 7 gone. We need to get that constant term. So negative 7 plus 7 it cancels out. Because an equal sign means that they're the same on both sides. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That leaves us with x over 3 equals 9. Because this is being divided by 3, I need to do the inverse operation, which is multiplying by 3. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other, and I get x equals 27. If I plug that back into my original equation, it does check out as correct. Let's take a look at solving some word problems. Step 1, we're going to read the problem. Step 2, draw a picture if possible. If it's something that we can draw a picture of, we'll create a diagram and assign a variable to the main unknown, if, to whatever it's asking us to find, what percent, what length, what height, we'll come up with a variable. After we've done that, we'll plan a method of attack, make a table if possible, and translate word phrases into expressions using the variable. Step three is solve the equation by writing an equation and then solving for the variable. Finally, step four is check our solution. We'll make sure that we answered all questions in the problem and that our numbers represent logical uh, answers. Let's take a look at this problem. 97 is 24 less than four times the number. We can't really draw a picture of that, but we can translate this into an expression. We know 97 can be represented with a number is, can be represented with an equal sign, 24 less than is represented with a negative 24, it's 24 less than, and 4 times a number is 4 times, I'm going to use n for my variable since I don't know what that is, 4n or 4 times n. When we write that all as one piece, we get 97 equals 4x minus 24, or 4n if you use n minus 24. Then we would just follow our steps to solve 4x by, let's go ahead and solve. See if you can solve this on your own and come back and check your work. Add 24 to both sides, and after you've done that, these 24s cancel. We get 121 equals 4x. We would divide both sides by 4 to get the x all by itself. And 
we're going to get a decimal, is what it looks like, unless I added wrong. But I think we're going to get a decimal. How many quarters must be removed from $2.64 to leave a total of $1.89? Well, how many quarters is our unknown? Let's use Q. And it says must be removed. Removed means taken away. So that's subtraction. And it's going to leave us a total of, so that reminds me of uh, an equal sign here, $1.89. We know that quarters have a 25 cent value. So the value of the quarters is 0.25Q. I'm going to take 264 and I'm going to remove 25 cents times however many quarters that takes until I get to $1.89. Go ahead and solve that one from on your own and we'll see if you've come up with the right answer in class. The grain elevator weighed Mr. Young's truck at 17,760 pounds before he dumped his wheat. The weight of the empty truck is 6,180 pounds. If the wheat weighed 60 pounds a bushel, how many bushels of wheat did he deliver to the elevator? Well, this might be a good one that I could actually draw a picture of or a diagram. Uh, I might say, for example, that here's his truck. I know, a very basic truck. But here's his truck, and it's 17,760. And I know that his truck weighed 6,180 pounds. So if I remove the weight of the truck, whatever weight I have left, whatever that is, is going to be just the wheat, however many pounds that is. And I know that it's going to be divided into 60 pounds a bushel. So I can divide it into groups of 60. And maybe a picture might be helpful on that one. Or we can write an expression. Bushels of wheat is represented with B. And 60B is the weight of the wheat, 60 pounds a bushel. 60 pounds a bushel plus the weight of the truck equals 17,760. See if you can solve that one on your own, and we'll check it in class. Today we worked on these things, solving two step equations and translating word problems into equations before solving them. If you guys have any questions, be sure to ask me in class the next time you see me.